Section 10.3, Geometric Sequences and Series. A sequence in which the ratio between successive terms is a constant is called a geometric sequence. The constant is referred to as the common ratio, denoted R. To find the common ratio of geometric sequence, divide any term following the first term by the preceding term. Given a term of the sequence, uh, to find the next term of the sequence, multiply the given term by the common ratio. While the rate of change of an arithmetic sequence is constant, the rate of change of a geometric sequence can either increase or it can decrease. Example 1, determine the common ratio and find the next three terms of the geometric sequence. Uh, so with this one, we can take negative 2 divided by 8, negative 2 divided by 8, uh, which is negative 1 fourth, or we could take uh, 1 half divided by negative 2, and if we multiply the tops and bottoms by 2, we get 1 over negative 4, so it's still negative 1 fourth. Uh, now they want the next three terms. Well, first of all, r is negative 1 fourth, and then the next three terms, we multiply 1 half by negative 1 fourth to start out with. Uh, so the next term would be negative 1 eighth, and then we'd have positive uh, 1 over 32, and then we'd have negative 1 over uh, let's see, 128. Letter B, uh, we're, we need to find the common ratio. So we have 2w plus 6 over w plus 3. And we can factor a 2 out of the top. And we get 3w plus 3. So in this case, r is equal to 2. Now the next three terms will be 8w plus 24. And then uh, 16w plus 48, and then the next one will be 32w plus uh, 96. In a geometric sequence, the first term, it, let's call it a sub 1, is maybe a specific example would be 3, and then to get the second term we multiply by r, which is a sub 1 times r to the first, which would be 3 times 4 if r was 4, that'd be 12. And then the third term we'd, we'd multiply the first one by r squared. And that would be 48 for the specific example. Then the fourth term, we'd multiply by r to the third. For the fifth term, we'd multiply by r to the fourth. So if you want the nth term, you have n minus 1 r's that you would multiply a sub 1 times. Uh, so the nth term of a geometric sequence with first term a sub 1 and common ratio r is given by a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. The number of r's is going to lag behind by 1. Uh, to the term that we want. Write an explicit formula and a recursive formula for finding the nth term of the geometric sequence given in example 1a. So a sub 1 is equal to 8 and r we found out by dividing negative 2 divided by 8 is negative 1 fourth. So the nth term is equal to a sub 1 which is 8 times r uh, which is negative one-fourth in this case, to the n minus one. Now the recursive formula would be a sub n equals a sub n minus one, and then times, in this case, negative one-fourth, but then we have to say that a sub one is equal to eight. We've got to say where to start this uh, sequence at. Example three, nth terms. Find the 27th term of the geometric sequence, 189, 151.2, and so on. So the 27th term, we need a sub 27 is equal to a sub 1, which is 189, uh, and then I need times r uh, to the n minus 1, which would be 26. Well, let's take 151.2, 151.2, and divide by 189. Uh, that is 0.8. So we have 0.8 to the 26. And we need to take 189 times 0.8 raised to the 26th power, which is 0 0.571. Now, now there's a is there a fraction for that? Probably not. Nope. So this is going to be 0 0.571. Find the specified term of each geometric sequence or sequence with the given characteristics. So a sub 9 for this sequence right here. So a sub 9 is equal to 4 times we need r to the 8th power and that's going to be 14 over 4 which uh, reduces to 7 halves so a sub 9 is 4 times 7 halves to the 8th power. 
So four times, parentheses, seven halves raised to the eighth power. Whoops, I missed the parenthesis there. Let's insert it. We have 90,075. 90,000. 75.016. We want a sub 12 if a sub 3 is 32 and r is equal to negative 4. So 1, 2, 3. So the third one is 32. And uh, we want a sub 12. So the 12th term is a sub 1. Uh, let's divide 32 divided by 4. Negative 4 is negative 8. And then negative 8 divided by negative 4 is 2. So the first term is 2. R is negative 4, and then we have to the n minus 1, which is going to be 11. So 2 times negative 4 raised to the 11th power. And the 12th term is really big, equals 8388608. So about 8 million. Example 5, geometric means. Write a sequence that has two geometric means between 4 and 108. So we have 4, and then we'd have a geometric mean, another geometric mean, and then 108. So let's take 108 and divide by 4, which is 27. So we could take 4 times 27 and jump right to 108, but that's not what happened. We took 4 times the r, and then times the r, and then times the r to get to 108. So r to the third is equal to 27. So r is the third root of 27, which is 3. So 4 times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36, and then times 3 is 108. Find the indicated geometric means for each pair of non-consecutive terms. We have negative 4 and then two geometric means, one, two, and then 13.5. So let's find out what could we take times negative four to jump to 13.5. So we have 13.5, and then uh, we're gonna divide that by negative four. And we get negative, uh, can we get a fraction for that? Math, uh, change it to a fraction. So negative 27 over eight. So negative 27 over 8. So we could jump right to this one by multiplying by negative 27 over 8. But we multiplied by r, by r, and by r. So we r to the third is negative 27 over 8. Now if we take the third root, r is uh, going to be negative 3 halves. Uh, so the next number would be, uh, let's see, 12 halves, that'd be 6. And then times 3 halves. Uh, that would be 18 divided by 2, that would be 9, and then we'd have 27 divided by 2, which is, uh, yeah, 13.5. Uh, so that's, but that's going to be positive, that's negative, and that's going to be positive. 5b, 10 and .016 with three means. So we start with 10, and then we have 1, 2, 3 means, and then we have .016. So we're multiplying by r, one, two, three, four times to get from the beginning to the end, which means we'll have r to the fourth is equal to 0 0.016 divided by 10. Uh, so r to the fourth is equal to 0 0.0016, and then r is equal to plus or minus 0.2, and it's plus or minus because we'd have to take the fourth root of 0 0.0016. Now if we take 10, 10 times 0.2, we get 2. But that would be plus or minus because r could be either positive or negative. But then the next one is definitely going to be positive times 0.2. You get a positive 0.4, but then you could get plus or minus 0 0.08, and then the next one would definitely be a positive 0 0.016. A geometric series is the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. So like arithmetic sequence, we have values here, except you multiply to get the next one. And then this would be the related geometric series. A formula for the sum S sub n of the first n terms of a finite geometric series can be developed by looking at the series S sub n and R times S sub n to create the terms for R S sub n. Each term in S sub n is multiplied by R. 
These series are then aligned so that similar terms are grouped together and then R times S sub N is subtracted from S sub N. So what does all that mean? If you have a partial sum uh, that's geometric, you have the first term plus the first term times R plus the first term times R squared and you keep going in that pattern. And then when you get to the end, you're, you're almost to the end. You have N minus 2 and then finally the N minus 1 is the very last one. Well, now if you multiplied all of that times r, you'd have a sub 1 times r, which is right here. You'd have a sub 1 r squared right there. Then you'd have a sub 1 r to the third. And then out towards the end, you had a, you'd have a sub 1 r to the n minus 2, r to the n minus 1. And then you'd have this extra one when you multiplied this times r. Because if you multiply this times r, that's like having r to the n minus 1 plus another one, which is just r to the n. Well, if you shift these over and subtract, you get the first one and you get the last one and it'll be a negative of the last one and everything else in the middle is going to cancel out. Now if you factor out an S sub N and then divide by 1 minus R you get the formula uh, to, for the partial sum of a geometric series. It says therefore S sub N equals A sub 1 uh, times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. To get the second one you can multiply through by a sub 1, you'd have a sub 1 minus a sub 1 r to the n, but uh, if you multiplied by r, you could get a sub 1 minus a sub 1 r to the n minus 1 times r. So this right here is a sub n. So then we replace that with a sub n, and you get that second one. Find the sum of the first six terms of the geometric series, 8 plus 14 plus 24.5. Well, a sub 1 is equal to 8, and r is equal to 14 over 8, which is 7 fourths. So uh, we want the first six terms. s sub 6 is equal to 8 times 1 minus r to the 6 over 1 minus r. And we know what r is, it's 7 fourths. So 8 times 1 minus 7 fourths, 7 fourths, to the 6th divided by... Uh, 1 minus 7 fourths. Uh, so now we have, let's do this, let's go 1 minus uh, 7 fourths, 7 fourths, raised to the sixth power, and we'll divide that by 1 minus uh, 7 fourths, and then multiply that times 8. And we get 295, 295.711. Find the sum of the first n terms of a geometric series with a sub 1, 3, a sub n equals 768, and r equals negative 2. So s sub n, in this case, is equal to uh, a sub 1, which is 3, minus a sub n times r over 1 minus r. We have 3 minus 768 times negative 2 and then we'll divide that by 3 and we get 513. Geometric sum in sigma notation. Find the sum from n equals 2 to 7 of 3 times 5 to the n minus 1 which is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Now we want the sixth partial sum. 7 minus 2 is 5 then plus 1 is 6. That's equal to a sub 1 so when we plug 2 in uh, we get 5 to the first times 3, that's 15. Then times 1 minus 5 to the uh, r to the n, which is 6, divided by 1 minus r, which is equal to, let's see, 15 times 1 minus 5 to the sixth. And then we're going to divide that by negative 4. And we get 58,590. In lesson 10.1, you learn that calculating the sums of infinite series may be possible if the sequence of terms converges to zero. For this reason, the sums of infinite arithmetic series cannot be found. The formula for the sum of a finite geometric series can be used to develop a formula for the sum of an infinite geometric series. If the absolute value of r is greater than 1, then the absolute value of r to the n increases without limit. It'll shoot off to infinity as n approaches infinity. However, when the absolute value of r is less than 1, r sub n approaches 0 as n approaches infinity. Thus, if you take this formula right here, and if r is less than 1, this, uh, let's say r is 1 half. We have 1 half 
to the n just on this little piece right there. And if you if n is shooting off to infinity, this becomes one over infinity. Or like let's say you had one over one thousand. That's really small. But what if you had one over one billion? That's really small. This is shooting off to zero. So if r is less than one, then this goes to zero. And then uh, the top is going to be 1, and you have a sub 1 over 1 minus r. The sum of an infinite, infinite geometric series. The sum s of an infinite geometric series for which absolute value of r is less than 1 is given by the sum is a sub 1 over 1 minus r. If possible, find the sum of each infinite geometric series. So the infinite sum is going to be a sub 1 over 1 minus 3 divided by 9, is one third. So multiply everybody by three and you get 27 over two. Now on B, if we take negative 1.25 and we divide that by 0.25, we get negative five. Well, the absolute value of negative five is five and that's bigger than one. So there's no sum for this. In letter C, R is 0.2 in this case. Uh, this is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So the r is 0.2. This one will have a sum. It'll have an infinite sum. The first term in this series is 4 times 0.2 to the third. So we have 4 times 0.2 raised to the third. So the first term is 0 0.032, 0 0.032 over 1 minus 0.2. So we're going to divide this by 1 minus 0.2, which is 0 0.04.